in Ohio this week, and uh, I, and we we have our correspondent who was there. Are, 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 are you okay over there? Is, is something going on? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> Okay, uh, but uh, uh, you and we had her for a moment. I'm hoping she pops back in. But Jen, Jen Carlin's was with you as well. But you guys uh, mm -hmm. uh, took a trip up to Cleveland for uh, WWE Raw last night. So, you know, I, I, I guess you're you're big MCK MGK fans. Um, oh yeah, who is it? <laughs> so how was the experience? Yeah. How was the experience uh, checking it out in, uh, in in the foreign lands of Cleveland? The foreign lands of Cleveland. Uh, yeah, I have to apologize. Larry the Mutilator just got home. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it was it was a really good time last night. It was um, the raw as a whole was kind of a meh, but because um, not much really happened, uh, at least in my point of view. Uh, but it was the crowd was great. The crowd was much better than a Pittsburgh crowd. Um, more in attendance, more um, hardcore fans, more um, a fair amount of kids, but more adults because you see a lot of kids when you see them um, in the Pittsburgh shows. But I thought there was a fair amount of adults in um but it was it was good. I thought it was a good show. It was entertaining, especially for us. I mean, I think it was more entertaining for us being there. Uh, the dusty things um, that they were showing in between every time you know we came back from break, we we're just clapping along. And uh, when they did the, uh, the the salute, the bell ten bell salute, um, we were all standing, and there was not a dry eye in the place. So. That's great. That's great. So uh, I mean, anything else? Uh, um, um, <laughs> You had a half an hour of talking at the beginning. I'm so oh sorry. Oh my gosh, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's a podcast. I have to be eating. I currently have Anthony's ice cream. Thank you. <laughs> there, the meat leader is a keeper. <laughs> Bring me food. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of uh, like I guess the vignettes and things going on backstage. The things mm -hmm. with the, the divas that was that was rather boring. Um, I think what made it for me uh, was there was a few things that really made the show for me. One was um, uh, well, I, I don't want to get into the Kevin Owens thing. I'll let you guys, <laughs> we'll talk about that one more later because that was fantastic. Um, I, I, Seth Rollins as a troll is amazing. I enjoyed watching Titus O'Neil just toss Big E around like it was no big deal. Uh, Neville was just to see that in person was un, just like heart stoppingly amazing. And um, just to be able to hear the reaction of the crowd whenever, um, you know, waiting for Brock and then having Brock walking out was just just phenomenal it made the whole night like it was just like wow because <laughs> that you could just hear everybody around us going oh i hope it's brock i hope it's brock and it's brock and it's just like everybody up on their feet just yes take was that, that seth rollins was that your first time seeing brock no i i've seen i think i've seen him before but i don't i it's been out of raw like in the he, last couple was years he Royal rumble no he was a last no. raw he was a last raw yeah yeah raw pittsburgh we okay. saw him yeah. But yeah but he looks great Brock Lesnar looks great right now. He has features. Like, it's not just a big burp, burp, burp. <laughs> yes, it's the hard-hitting commentary you get from me. But no, it was, it was like I said, the show was meh, but there were definitely some moments that it made it worthwhile to be there as a fan, mm -hmm. I thought. And and I heard you, you guys ran into some people after the show. Yeah, we ran into a couple. I, I, I'm going to say who we ran into because they were very, very nice gentlemen. We ran into the guys from J&J &J Security and... Um, very, very nice guys. Um, Jen's nephew was with us, and it was his birthday, and he walked over and asked for a photo, and they were like, oh, sure. You know, it was, it was you know, nice guys. Um, they were picking up some beer and snacks. I mean, I think they could splurge a little bit more on the beer. Of course, light. But, you know, <laughs> who am I to judge as I pound ice cream over here with M&Ms and caramel? <laughs> so, yes, we, we, you know, we, anywhere we go, we make friends. And, oh, the, one of the, the other fun things that happened is the uh, Golden State Warriors, the NBA team, actually walked in behind us. And I look so normal next to them. I was like, wow, these are my people. These are my people. I, I wish I would have I wish I would have thought of a periscope and just held the camera there as you watch them walk behind me and go, look, that's how tall that guy really is in li real life. This is how tall that guy is. <laughs> so yeah, lots of sports happening last night. Lots of sports. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, for those on audio, uh, uh, she is a very tall girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> very tall lady. Very tall mm -hmm. lady. Yes. yes, I played basketball. <laughs> awesome so so you mentioned you, you kind of uh, uh skirt around it but i think the most exciting thing certainly over uh, uh, the last couple of days in ohio including money in the bank uh is definitely kevin steen no, i'm sorry owens jeez yeah um but uh between uh, uh taking out machine gun kelly 
um, um, uh, having a great match with uh, uh, Ziggler and, and, of course, the tremendous sequel match they had with John Cena at Money in the Bank has really been the biggest story of the last couple of days. Uh, unfortunately, kind of... Uh, Kind of, kind of uh, uh, casting a shadow on Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, which I thought was also pretty great. And on any other normal pay per view, I think it would have been match of the night. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, Owens is the guy. Owens is their guy now. Owens is in mm-hmm. their commercial for their T-shirts. It's <laughs> it's over. Owens is there. And and we've been talking about this over the last week or so, and and what you know, I watched the E60 special, and I'm I'm thinking about the way that they're kind of calling up these guys and making these decisions. So so you, Owens just basically walked in there with it. Obviously, he has the experience after 15 years, but but I, I think it's a rare breed when they walk in and say, "You get it. You can go on TV next week," which is awful. Well, I think it helps Kevin Steen when he was in like ROH and all that stuff. He always cut WWE like promos, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like like he he out of almost anyone save for CM Punk that they brought in, uh, probably had the best mic work out out of like because they brought in like Balor, Atami, Sami Zayn, like who bears a slight resemblance to El Generico. All those guys, amazing, phenomenal wrestlers, not really known for their mic skills. No, no. if you want if you want to bump up the roster really quickly. You got to be able to talk, right? You got to be able because I mean, let's be honest. N- NXT, if you can wrestle really well already, NXT is there for you to learn where the cameras are and to learn how to talk. 